It was a week before solstice in this dead wasteland, but thanks to the drought, celebrations were banned. There would be no gift giving, no parties, no cheer, in the hopes that the food stores could last through the year. Those of the village with lowered heads and tight belts agreed to agree until the snow melts. But one little boy with a tear in his eye could not let a year without Christmas pass by. He vowed to his parents, just wait and see. In a week, in the square, we'll have a Christmas tree. Late that night, when the sun had gone down, he snuck out from his bunk and right out of the town. He headed north toward some mountains he'd seen. Though they lived in the desert, the mountain tops were green. With just an axe and some rope and a couple of days, soon in the town, a tree would display. Covered in lights with decorations they'd make, he would save Christmas for Christmas's sake. He walked for two days through the desert until he reached the bottom of a towering hill and climbed and climbed till his whole body ached, but still found not one tree he could take. Though he walked and he climbed and he looked all around and found many trees, all these trees were brown. The tree's meaning is life, but these were all dead, and in the hopelessness the boy lowered his head. But in the quiet, as the boy stood there still, he heard the echoes of a song through the hill, and followed the sound to the edge of a town, with fires and green trees all growing around. There was joy and merriment in the survivors here, though he wanted to smile, all he could do was sneer. While his people suffered, here they sang songs. While his village was dying, they carried on. As he jealously watched from the dark, he could see, in the center of town, the perfect Christmas tree. It had candles and garlands and decorations so bright, and all the town's children danced in its light. They had so much, while his went without. So he laid out his plan to be carried out. He'd wait until everyone was sleeping carefree. Then he'd take his axe and he'd chop down that tree. And he'd carry it home, decorations and all. His tribe would be merry with this tree standing tall. This village had plenty. He could tell by their bliss. He knew this one tree would not be missed. When all grew quiet, with his axe in his palm, the boy snuck in closer to their tannenbaum. And as he grew ready, and the axe was raised. There was a glint in his eye. A bearded face caught his gaze. The old man said nothing, just smiled at the boy, as if only his presence brought the old man such joy. But inside, the young man was riddled with guilt. The town's children would be sad, and the tree would be killed. The boy dropped his axe on the snow-covered ground as the folks from the village gathered around. The boy stood crying and shivering as one child approached, but to his surprise the child gave him her coat. Through sobs and whimpers the boy tried to explain that his village was dying and not much remained. If he could bring back a tree with his axe and his rope, maybe his village would once more have hope. The people all listened to his every word, and deep in their hearts their mission was heard. With a hand on his shoulder, a woman said with care, We don't have much, but what we have will be shared. The next morning the villagers all got to work, filling wagons with vegetables, some still covered in dirt, dried meats and fruits, well, fruits all in cans. And what could not fit in wagons, they carried in hand. They brought not only food, but also blankets and furs and ropes and tools for working the earth. Even the young ones put on a show, gathering trinkets and toys for the children below. As they walked down the mountain, the boy could see, in the very last wagon, his very own tree. Back in his village, to his parents' relief, the boy introduced them to his tribe and his chief. And on Christmas Day, a big feast was made, and the tree was replanted in the square where it stayed. Stories and gifts were exchanged for a spell, and the very next day, they all dug a new well. 
When it came time to leave, they vowed to return every solstice with gifts for a yearly adjourn. And as the boy watched, his heart filled with glee. He suddenly remembered the old man by the tree. He'd not admonished the boy, or yelled as he'd feared. But in all the confusion, the old man disappeared. He'd not been there the next morning or on the trail down the hill, and throughout the celebrations he'd not shown up still. But the boy thought of his smile and his long white beard, and remembered the stories of Saint Nick he'd revered. A magical elf that brought Christmas to all, and taught that every gift was important, no matter how small. The boy looked at the tree that made all this begin, and thought to himself, could it have been him? One last tear fell as he stood in the sand, and he whispered out loud, Merry Christmas, Wasteland. Hello survivors, this is Makeshift. I hope you all enjoyed my little take on The Night Before Christmas, which is actually titled A Visit from St. Nicholas, which I just learned. Consider it my gift to you as we celebrate the end of another year of being alive. I know this time of year can be hard for some of you, but whatever joys or struggles you're going through, I want you to know that I love you all. Being a part of this community has been an absolute joy in my life, and I thank you for letting me be a part of yours, and for listening to my stories, and for your never-ending generosity supporting this channel however you can. I wish you all happy holidays for whatever you celebrate, even if it's just the people around you. And until next year, stay alive. <laughs>